Let's start with the 6A 4A showdown on the Blitz tonight. Oxford and Jacksonville is separated by less than 20 miles, but last year renewing their rivalry after a two decade break. Let's go to Jacksonville, home of the Golden Eagles, opening possession for the Yellow Jackets of Oxford. Mason Mims has Kamari Hampton in stride for a 42 yard touchdown. Oxford up 7 0 early. Get used to hearing Mims to Hampton because here's another connection. Hampton goes up and brings it down at the Jacksonville 5. Next play, it's the Mims to Hampton connection in the back of the end zone. Oxford up 13 to nothing. Second quarter, it's the ground attack for Oxford as Damius Wilson goes up the middle and cuts in and out to bring the ball down inside the 20, a 35-yard gain, and that would help set up this Jaden Thomas run who just barrels through guys to find his way into the end zone. 20 to nothing, Oxford. Late in the second quarter, Wilson again finding the open field, runs into the end zone for a 28-yard score. Oxford wins 36 to 7. Here's coach Sam Adams. We played really well in the first half, especially and the second half got a little bit sloppy and had some kind of miscues in there. So, you know, I'd like to see us finish it out a little cleaner than we did, uh, but I thought we played really efficiently and, you know, we got what we wanted out of the, out of the, out of the game overall. We've got, you know, probably three to five guys on offense that we really feel good with, you know, in the ball in their hand and any kind of space. And, um, you know, I thought our coaches put together a really good game plan or create some space with those guys and uh, we got them in some open field situations. The Cherokee County Warriors made a run all the way to the 4A title game last year. Tonight, they were trying to close out a 10-0 regular season for the first time since 1973. The Warriors ranked number two in 4A, hosting Fort Payne from Class 6A. Early on, a defensive battle, Wildcat quarterback Dex Barnador is sacked by DeZonte Diamond. And that Warrior defense is fired up. Scoreless after the first, but Cherokee County's Carson Tittle takes a shot downfield and it's hauled in by Ben Frampton. Warriors up 6-0, but that's when Fort Payne would buckle down. Carter Blaylock on the carry, only 5-6, a buck 45, but he runs over the linebacker down to the one. And then two plays later, Caden Dubose in from a yard out, and Fort Payne goes up 7-6. Now under two minutes to play in the first half, the Wildcats add to it. Bennett will find the pylon. It is a Touchdown for Fort Payne, 14-6 as we go to the halftime break. Third quarter, the dive play going to Banks. He breaks the plane for his second rushing touchdown of the night. Fort Payne wins it 21-14. Big 4A game tonight. Sipsy Valley hosting Northside. A win could affect seeding in Region 3. First quarter, LJ Cormier hits Wyatt Bailey on the crossing route for the first score of the game for Sipsy Valley. And Bailey and the Bears were just getting warmed up. Bailey will field the punt. And then check this out. First, he's got to get good blocking, right? And then it's just pure athletic ability. Cuts one way, then the other. Back again. And Bailey will find running room down the left sideline. Keeping his balance. Runs about 150 yards for a 65-yard Pump return touchdown in the box score. Second quarter, Sipsy Valley threatening again. And it's going to be Cormier who will take the snap. And he'll take it himself, reaching out for a three-yard touchdown. Sipsy Valley wins the game, gets the three seed in Region 3. West Blockton gets the four. Dora had a shot at winning 4A Region 5. Had to beat St. Clair County. Uh, Keyshawn Pryor and the Bulldogs in the red zone. Pryor takes the ball, breaks through three tackles to score the touchdown, 14-6 Dora with 8.20 left in the second quarter. And then Colby Key in now for Dora. He'll hand off to Jaden Griffin, and he's going to go right up the middle for the touchdown, 20-6 Dora. The Bulldogs playing awfully well as we head to the playoffs. Parker Blankenship and the Saints looking to cut the deficit. Blankenship will air it out. He'll find Jeremiah Thomas who breaks the tackle and scores. But Dora wins the game 47 to 27. Haleyville hosting fifth ranked West Morgan. A Lions win would have given them the 4A Region 5 title. But West Morgan cruises to victory, giving Dora the region championship. Let's look back at a couple of games we showed you last night from 6A and 7A. Mountain Brook ranked sixth in 6A, hosting Baker ranked eighth in 7A. And the game plan was abundantly clear. Feed Cole Gamble the Rock. 
Here he comes running downhill and just running over the Baker safety. And the Spartans take a 14 to nothing lead. Now Baker needed points in a hurry and they got him on the read option from Roderick Taylor. That made it 14 7. And Mountain Brook, having established the run, made the play action very effective. John Cooper to Clark Sanderson. Sanderson, unfortunately, went out with a season ending injury late in the game. Gamble had a terrific first half. 14 carries, 101 yards rushing by halftime. Johnny Cobden had a really nice story on Gamble on Blitz Game Day. Hope you saw that. He was good last night, but Baker was better, outscoring the Spartans 24 0 and winning 37 28 with that big second half. Vestavia Hills, the Rebels ranked sixth in 7A, hosting Helena, ranked ninth in 6A. First quarter, John Paul Head with a quarterback draw up the middle for 12 yards. And then Vestavia inside the 10. It's JP again for a five yard score. Rebels take an early 7 0 lead. Now it's 14 0. Huskies deep in their own territory. And Tennessee commit Jordan Ross just bullies Nathan Ferguson for the sack. And then in the second quarter, more Vestavia defense and more Jordan Ross. Another sack for two yards of a loss. Under three minutes till the half, William Tonsmeyer Jr. will make a guy miss. And then he goes for a big gain of 40 yards. Vestavia Hill is now inside the five. And Caden Taylor finds his way to the end zone. And Vestavia wins 44 to nothing. Coming up next on the Blitz, more highlights, including the game of the week. The John Carroll Cavaliers trying to keep their dream season going. We'll show you what happened between the Cavs and Maplesville. Jackson Olin wrapping up the season tonight, hosting Foley, the alma mater of Julio Jones. And it was a big night for Foley's Colton Nero. We're going to talk a lot about him in this set of highlights. In the first quarter, Nero gets into the end zone from 15 yards out, and it was 7 0. But J.O. would answer Rashad Sager from five yards out, and that made it 7 6. But listen, the Mustangs could not stop Colton Nero. He had a huge game in the second quarter. Nero will get loose for a 50 yard touchdown, and that made it 17 to six and then later in the quarter it's going to be Colton Nero again. He'll go 30 yards for another touchdown. Colton Nero runs for 270 yards and five touchdowns. Foley wins 38 26. Will Mara has taken John Carroll to heights they haven't seen in two decades. Seven and two most wins since 2009 headed to the playoffs for the first time since 2009. Tonight Mara and the Cavs hosting Maplesville in the Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week, and the Cavaliers got off to a great start. Zach Archer runs into a, a pile, spins through a pile, and goes 44 yards for the touchdown, and John Carroll was up 7-0. Later in the first quarter, Mitchell Nutter with a big hole to run through, wrapping up the ball, but nobody touches him. 14-0 Cavs. Then in the second quarter, Carson McFadden, on the quarterback keeper, he's got some speed. 58 yards for the touchdown, 21 to nothing. John Carroll. Then later in the second quarter, McFadden, a beautiful throw going up top to Charles Farr, who also does the kicking, lays out for the beautiful catch inside the 10. And that led to this, McFadden to Ryan Redmond, and it's 31 to nothing Cavaliers. And they would keep pouring it on in the second half. Garrett Barnes in at quarterback, hits Redmond from long distance. John Carroll wins 44-7, the Cavs 8-2. and two. And They'll go to Fairview to start the 5A playoffs. And what do you do to your coach who just led you to a historic regular season finish and broke your 14-year playoff drought? Will Merrick gets dunked, and the team hoists the trophy for winning the Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week. Good times at Pat Sullivan Field. Congrats to the Cavaliers. Gordo will host Phil Campbell next week in round one of the 3A playoffs. Last night, the Green Wave ranked third in the state, taking care of business against the Hale County Wildcats. After a Jace Hancock pick, Green Wave's Ethan Wilder will take the handoff, break three tackles on the way to the end zone for a 42-yard score, eight nothing Green Wave after the two-point conversion. Next possession for the Wildcats, Antoine Zimmerman escapes the pocket, tries to make something happen downfield, but it's Hancock coming up with his second pick of the game. A few plays later, Wilder takes the handoff. 
He'll punch it in for his second touchdown of the first quarter. And Wilder was not done. Here he'll take the handoff, and he's going to be gone for another Gordo touchdown. Gordo took a 23 to nothing lead at that point, and the Green Wave roll 58-26. Hueytown is really on a roll. The Golden Gophers hosting Gardendale. Hueytown on a five-game winning streak coming into this game, and here's why. Guys like Jaquel Rouser, hard to bring that guy down. That is a 44-yard touchdown, and the Gophers were off and running. And they also play pretty good defense there at Hueytown. Jacob Hanbury with a 22-yard pick, six. And quarterback Jabron Ellington had a big night last night, ran for a couple of scores. Hueytown rocks the Rockets 47-28, 7-3 after that 1-3 start. Keep an eye on the Gophers. And coming up, a look ahead to Blitz Game Day special next week.